Uh, Faizan from India. Sheikh, um, I had a question. What happened was like few months ago, in my house I had stepped on something and I removed it with my other foot. Like I thought it was some dirt, which I later got to know as lizard dung. That house lizard dung. But when doing wudu, I didn't know. So I, I didn't know that uh, I had stepped on that lizard dung. It ha it had been removed. So I didn't wash that area on my uh, soul thoroughly. I don't know even if I rubbed that area, but water reached that area. Should I repeat the prayers? But the lizard poo wasn't completely dry. Faizan, how do you know that it was uh, lizard dung? Um, I later, I again saw it and it was the lizard dung. Okay, After Faizan from India says that he stepped on something once. He removed it with his other foot and then when he went to make wudu he cleaned it thoroughly only to find out later that this was the dung or the droppings of a lizard so should he re repeat the prayer or not the answer is no you should not repeat the prayer because washing it does the job first of all second of all it's an issue of dispute whether lizard droppings and dung is Najis or not? And those who say it is Najis because a lizard is not a, an insect or a small um, type of a creature that has no soul or blood in it. It is a big piece of, uh, of, of ins a reptile, sort of. So they say that, okay, the droppings of a roach, a cockroach, or ants, or, or, or a fly, these are negligible. But what about the droppings of mice, the droppings of lizards, whom we are ordered to kill? Of course they're nudges. But what to do when we have so many of them? Here, we come back to a general rule, that whenever things get really tight and narrow, Islam comes and makes it wide and easy. Therefore, the scholars say that due to the fact that we cannot prevent this from happening in our houses, the interaction that mice and lizard in some countries is, is so overwhelming that you, you cannot get rid of them, no matter what you do. This causes a lot of hardship to people. And due to the fact that there is hardship, then Islam makes it easy and says this is negligible once you cannot get rid of it. Likewise with cats. Cats are animals. They're not pure to us. Their urine and dropping is najis. Yet due to the fact that they come in our homes and there are pets and they uh, come and go, the Prophet once saw a cat والسلام, and he uh, um, tilted the, uh, um, the bucket or the glass for it to drink from. So the companions were sh sort of shocked. Why is, why is he doing this? Because they had the notion that this is a najis animal. So the Prophet said, it is okay because this animal is among those that dwells among you. Likewise, a donkey, for example. And this is an issue of dispute among scholars, whether the sweat of a donkey is najis or not. Because we know the dung and the urine of donkeys are totally najis, impure. But what about the saliva? What about the sweat? So scholars say that we have no other option but to live with donkeys. I'm not referring to <laughs> any of our relatives, but I'm talking about the animal. Back then, they used to need donkeys in commuting, in carrying things. So they had to mix with it a lot. And therefore, the burden, the hardship of making anything touched by it, najis, was uplifted and it was okay. So I hope this answers your question.